All right, welcome to today's lesson, looking at inclines with friction. We've looked at them without friction before. If you hadn't seen that, you might want to head back because we're going to jump right into analyzing the incline here. Uh, so today we're going to start off, as we always do, by drawing the force diagram. So we can look at this situation, and we know that we're going to have a weight pointing straight down. There's an applied force up and to the right. So we'll call that FA. We'll call this the weight. We're going to have a normal force, and remember the normal force is going to point perpendicularly away from the surface that the block is on. That'll go this direction. And we're going to have a friction force in this case. Since the block is going to be moving up the hill, they're pushing it up the hill hard enough that it's actually moving up the hill, uh, then there's going to be a friction force that's downhill. It's going to be a kinetic friction because the block is sliding. All right. So we have our force diagram, and you'll notice that the normal force, the applied force, and the friction force are all at right angles to one another, and the weight is not. So we're going to, again, break that one up into its components. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. Um, let's say that we've got the part of the weight that is pointing this way. That's perpendicular to the surface. It's not pointing downhill. It's pointing perpendicular, so we'll call that weight perpendicular. And we've got another part of the weight that is pointing down the hill. Kind of draw it this way. We'll call that weight parallel. And now that we have those two weight components drawn in, we're going to basically ignore the downhill or the straight down part of the weight. I'm just going to erase it from my force diagram. All right, so now we have five forces. Uh, that we're going to be looking at. Now, two of them are components of the single weight force, but now we can deal with this just the way we've done with all these problems before. We're going to write out the sum of the forces, as we've done previously as well. So if we look at, uh, let's start with the perpendicular direction. It seems a little easier this time. Well, what we have is that the net force in the perpendicular direction is going to be equal to the normal minus the weight perpendicular. And remember, we take all of the forces in one direction, here that would be the normal, minus all of the forces in the other direction, which would be the perpendicular part of the weight. And that's going to be equal to MA in the perpendicular direction. But we should know that since this block there, it's not going up, it's not lifting off the surface, it's not digging down into the incline, it's just staying on the surface as it slides. So because we know that, we can say that this acceleration is actually going to be zero. And so that whole entire term, that whole thing, is just equal to zero. Let's write down the sum of the forces equation for the parallel direction. If we look at that, well, we get there's three forces that are either up, straight uphill, or straight downhill. We've got the applied force uphill, the friction, and the weight parallel downhill. Since the object is accelerating up the hill, I'm going to pick that as our positive direction, up and to the right. Uh, and the friction and the weight parallel will both be downhill. We've got that the net force in the parallel direction is going to be equal to uh, the applied force, Fa, minus the friction force, Fk, minus the parallel part of the weight. There we go. So we now have everything set up that we need to for this problem. Now, if you were doing this with a question, they probably would have already given you uh, some numbers and some things that you'd use to calculate these. but. Uh, I just wanted to start it off theoretically looking at the equation and the things from this point of view. What we're going to do now is uh, add in some values that we have right here. Uh, let me grab those. All right, so we have here some values. Oops, get that out of the way. <coughs> got theta, a value for the angle. Uh, we've got a value for the coefficient of friction, the applied force, and the mass of the block. So from there, there's some other things we're going to have to do. We're going to have to find the actual weight of the object. We're going to have to find the components of the weight, the perpendicular and parallel components. Um, and then keep going through and solve the rest of the problem to find the acceleration. Because that's what we're looking for here, is what's the acceleration. So let's get going. First thing we're going to do is say, well, the weight is going to be equal to mg. And for this object, that's 60 kilograms times 9.8. meters per second per second, or newtons per kilogram. 
And so we'll start off calculating that right here. Just to give myself some extra room, I'm gonna erase what I just wrote. And we've got here, it's gonna be 60 times 9.8. And we get 588 newtons. That's for the straight down weight. Now we need are the components of each of those, the parallel and perpendicular parts of the weight. So let's find those now. Now you may or may not remember these as we look at the uh, examples. So give me just a moment to get a blank slate here. And so what we have is this 588 Newton straight down, okay? That's the hypotenuse. And as you remember the way that we drew this, we have a part that is perpendicular to the incline this way, and then there's another part that goes parallel to the incline that way. This angle right here is our right angle, and this angle up here is the one that was given to us, which in this case was 25 degrees. So the thing that we get for these, the way that we can calculate these is that weight parallel, this part down here, the one that's downhill pointing down the slope in that direction is going to be given by, since that's opposite the angle, that's going to be given to the, by the weight times the sine of theta. And the other one, the perpendicular component, is going to be given by the weight times the cosine of theta. And so we have those two here, and we can go through and calculate those. As we said, it was 588 newtons, so all we need to do is take 588 and multiply by the sine of 25 and 588 times the cosine of 25. And these will tell us our two values here. So we've got 248.5 and 532.9. Let's pull those back to our main page. All right, so with all that work done, I think we have what we need here to finish this problem. Let's take a look at what we first will need to do is, well, we're really looking for the acceleration. And I guess I hadn't really finished the sum of the forces in the parallel direction because that's gonna be equal to m a in the parallel direction, which that's the only way it's accelerating. So that's gonna be equal to m a. And to figure that out that acceleration, well, we'll need to know all of the other things in that equation. The applied force, which we've been given, the friction force, which we're gonna need to calculate, the weight force parallel, which we just calculated, and we were given the mass. So we can go through and solve for the acceleration that way once we know all these things. The only one we need to find is the friction. And to find friction, well, we're gonna to need to know the normal force. So we're gonna use that first equation we see there, the perpendicular net force, to figure out the normal force. So let's do that now. Well, if we look at this equation, what we say is that the normal force minus the perpendicular weight is equal to zero. So we know that the normal force is just gonna be equal to the perpendicular weight, which is 532.9 newtons. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this up here in the place where I'm keeping note of all the forces. It's gonna be 532.9 newtons. And so then I can also go through and calculate the friction force. And remember, the friction force is equal to mu, the coefficient of friction, which in this case is 0.23, uh, and multiply by the normal force, which is 532.9. So let's do that now. Got this right here. I just need to multiply by 0.23, and it will tell us that the friction force is 122.56 or 122.6 uh, newtons. So now we have all the values we need to go through and find the acceleration. Let's look at this last equation we have here, and basically what we need to do is find get the acceleration on its own. So what I'm gonna start by doing is dividing both sides by the mass of the object, just like so. Getting that, these will cancel out, and we're left with that the acceleration is gonna be equal to the applied force minus the friction force minus the weight parallel, all divided by the mass. Now, this is particular to this case. This is not always the case. In different situations, if you were pushing in a different direction, if it was going uphill or downhill or whatever, uh, this would not be the equation that we would use. So this one is particular to this case, and we won't necessarily ever use it again. So this is one of those things that's a little weird about uh, forces, a little different than some of the other 
maybe the first unit is the equations are specific to the situation and you have to develop them based on the force diagram. So let's go ahead and plug our numbers in. We get here that the acceleration is going to be equal to the applied force, 450 newtons, minus the downhill component of the weight, which was the parallel part, the 248.5 newtons. minus the friction, 122.6 newtons. Now I, I guess I'm realizing here that I'm writing this in a slightly different order than the equation up above because that one had friction first, but subtraction is, uh, addition is commutative here, so we're fine on that. And then we'll divide by the mass, which is 60 kilograms. I'll start by doing the top here. Uh, we've got here 450. 50 minus 248.5 minus 122.6. So we'll calculate that. That tells us the net force on the object is 78.9 newtons. And if we divide by 60 kilograms, whoops, we, whoops. So if we divide by 60 kilograms, we get our acceleration, which is 1.315 meters per second per second. So let's write that down. That's this question solved. All right, so we have ourselves an answer. We went through and did the same steps we've done so far. Uh, there's one little difference here. We'll get to that as we go through and do a recap. So we started with the free body diagram, adding up the forces, making sure that we know what forces are in what direction. Uh, once we had that, well, we, we redrew the free body diagram but with the broken up components. So we took, in this case, the weight and broke it into components. When you're dealing with an incline, that's what we're going to do. If you're dealing with stuff on a flat surface, well, if you've got any diagonal forces, you're going to break those ones up into components. But here, since everything else is diagonal, we just say, let's just break up the weight and do it that way. Then we do the same we've done before, but in this case, we're now tilting our axis a little bit and looking at things uh, in the parallel direction and the perpendicular direction. We write down the sum of the forces, just like we've been doing, and then we start calculating. We figure out all the things that we know and can figure out. We see what we need to get and we find a way to get there by using the equations we have and the knowledge that we've learned within this unit. Hopefully that helps us get through these kinds of questions as we see them. Thanks. See you in class.